So I, I really appreciate the question, which is about the vocabulary we use, especially when we talk about sexual violence. And I tend to use the word survivor. I, you know, I tend to interact every day um, on the policy side of things with groups that sometimes work with survivors who maybe are providing the direct services to survivors. And we've heard that that's really, I think, an important thing to recognize, which is that survivor is, a, a, I think, a good term and one that a lot of people feel comfortable with. I really, though, want to encourage you all to ask sometimes, too. We'll see victim appear in legislation, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, we also know that there are some laws that use accuser and accused. That also might just be the way that things are constructed. I've started using survivor, and when you all work with communities, I think it's really important to bring in someone who is working directly in that community, who's maybe providing a service or something like that, and interacting every day with people who consider themselves in these categories and ask, what's the best, what's the best way for us to refer to this? I've been using Survivor. I think you'll see that in AEW's materials. But I also think that there's a lot of room for us to ask questions and to ask people what term they would like to use, especially when you're talking to them about some of the things they're experiencing. And I'm so glad you brought up the SUNY um, situation, which is just to say that the Department of Education investigated what were system-wide policies against oh, at SUNY schools and found that the system-wide approach was problematic. And so they entered, and this was under Title IX, they entered into something called a voluntary resolution agreement. And it's a long list of things they found that were maybe inadequate on campuses across the SUNY system. They looked at a few in particular, but they recognized that some of these things were coming from the system to all schools. They identified some of the problems, and they made some requirements and recommendations for schools, all of the SUNY schools to follow, to try to improve the climate on campus. That agreement is available online. Um, it's a long document, but it is broken into sections that tell you a little bit about the way schools should be approaching this issue. I would really encourage you to go read it. If you're looking for it, it's available most easily on a new website from the federal government called notalone.gov. Notalone.gov was established this spring sort of as a result of the White House Task Force Against Campus Sexual Assault, who was, they were asking a lot of questions. What are the problems out there? And one of the main ones is that people can't find the information they need. Students, community members, administrators, what is the most recent Title IX guidance? Where can I get some questions answered about these various laws? How do they interact with each other? Where have schools entered into agreements where they have to fix things? That's all in one place now. And if you go to that website, you can find the SUNY agreement. Now, the, SUNY, the agreement did not say that the schools had broken the law, but it did outline some things that they weren't doing quite correctly. And that's a great opening, I think, for many of you who work with SUNY schools because they're all supposed to be following this agreement. Even if they weren't specifically identified, it was for the entire system. And so I really want to stress that that's a great tool if you want to learn about things. But as we've heard, not all the schools are necessarily taking a proactive approach to fixing things. And so this is a great thing that AEW can help put pressure on those schools to do and some good ideas, I think, about how to. 